Welcome to my channel friends. Uh, welcome to the part 5 of logistics and supply chain management. So today we will be discussing about levels of customer service, levels of customer service involvement, customer service as an activity, customer service as a performance measure, customer service as a philosophy and we will also see elements of making a customer service department successful and barriers to excellent customer service. Okay. So now start, let's start with levels of customer service. So examples of various forms of customer service may include providing financial and credit terms, guaranteed delivery within specific time period, installing a product, maintaining satisfactory spare parts inventory and revamping a billing procedure to accommodate a customer request. Okay, so customer service is a very important activity in logistics management. So uh, customer service involves a lot of other activities. Like in, you can see like providing financial and credit terms is also considered as a customer service activity and guaranteed delivered within specified time period. It's it. Uh, here we are discussing about the timely delivery of the product. So once a customer orders a product, he expects that he will get the delivery on time and thereby he can increase the customer service is increased. The, we can get a delighted customer and installing a product. As we mentioned in one of the post transaction elements of customer service, certain products require like uh, guidance on how to install a product. So that is also another level of customer service and maintaining satisfactory spare parts inventory. We also discussed this point in the post transaction elements of customer service. Like uh, once you are delivering a, delivering a product, the service network also matter. Like after the sale is made, the customer also expect that uh, the companies provide an excellent service to the customer in terms of uh, spare parts and service so that the customer is delighted. Okay and revamping a billing procedure to accommodate a customer request. Like uh, here it's explained like how the customer requirements are met, like flexibility, how the system, how the system of a company is flexible to suit the customer requirements. Now let's try to understand the customer service with the help of a video. Okay. We all love to receive great customer service. As consumers, it makes us feel good. So much so, consumers now rate customer service as the most important factor when deciding to do business with a company. This means the traditional competitive advantages such as price, location and product are rapidly disappearing. In the technological era, customer service is king. Sad to say, but when it comes to customer service, we've all had a bad experience and news of bad customer service reaches more than twice as many ears as praise for good customer service. So it's really important to understand and avoid certain behaviours that make our customers angry. In a recent survey, 57% of customers expressed frustration that the company was not available when needed. 56% of customers felt that customer service is still too slow. And 42% of customers felt that they have to speak to multiple agents before their problem is resolved. 34% of customers feel like just another number and the service they receive is too impersonal. With 24% of consumers feeling they know more about the product than the agent they were speaking to. And a rapidly growing percentage of customers are dissatisfied with poor website design and online availability. The consequences of getting customer service wrong can be very damaging. A massive 89% of customers have reported that they've stopped doing business with companies because of bad customer service. Nobody wants to work for a failing business and even worse, if the trend continues, there might not be a business at all. Poor customer service is a factor in 8 out of 10 businesses that go bust. With complaints on the rise in today's connected world, customers don't just get mad, they get even. A recent study revealed a staggering 38 million UK consumers made a complaint last year. That amounts to a complaint every 1.2 seconds. And it's important to recognise the ever-increasing influence of the internet and social media on customer service. Social media outlets have given customers a megaphone to voice their complaints to an increasingly connected population. Twitter, Facebook and others are rife with customer stories, mostly negative with game-changing impacts on customer service. A massive 20% of consumers would now take revenge on a company by posting a negative comment online. 
And social media was the channel for over 20 million complaints across all sectors during the past 12 months. Avoiding customer complaints is only one of the many reasons why you need to get customer service right. There are lots of benefits for you and the company you work for. It's true that nobody enjoys working for an organization that feels like a sinking ship. If the customer is happy, you will be too. It will allow you to focus on proactive opportunities and stop you feeling like you're in a constant reactive firefighting mode. Plus, good customer service fuels positive publicity in the media, allowing you to be proud of what you do. Most importantly, happy customers become loyal customers. And loyal customers are very valuable indeed. They're willing to spend more, they refuse to switch services, and crucially, they're very likely to spread the love and recommend your services to others. How do you create these magical loyal customers? Policy? Systems? Technology? No. It's simple. In a recent survey, friendly employees or customer service representatives topped this list of what customers want. So, it really is down to you. Try to take what you've learned in this module and use it to shape how you interact with customers every day. So as you have seen in the video, basically there are three kinds of customer. So one is a happy customer, one is an unhappy customer, and another is a delighted customer. So who is a happy customer? For example, I make an order for a product and I uh, and uh, the company says that your product will be delivered within two days. So if I am getting the product within two days, I am a happy customer. So who is an unhappy customer? So I ordered a product and uh, the, when the product was delivered to me, I am finding out that the product is damaged. So definitely I'm unhappy with the services. So I am an unhappy customer. So who is a delighted customer? It's a delighted customer is a one. Like for example, I can take, I ordered a product from Amazon. For example, I ordered a mobile phone from Amazon. And uh, when I'm getting the delivery of my product, that is the mobile phone, I'm getting an accessory free along with it. For example, a headset. So I'm, I'm getting what I'm not expecting. So I'm a delighted customer. So when I'm receiving more than I expect, I'm a delighted customer. So basically three, these are the three kinds of customer, happy, unhappy and delighted customer. Okay. So as we have seen in the video, like now the social media is very aggressive. So all the com companies are fighting hard to survive in the market and to create a better customer satisfaction so that the customer become loyal customer and they spread very good rumors about your company. So. Uh, most of, most of the customers, when they are planning to buy uh, on, in a digital platform, they will always look something called as Google review. So now in this era, it's really important that customer satisfaction has to be taken on a priority so that companies can have survive in the market. Now let's understand the levels of customer service involvement or awareness. So uh, customer service involvement is treated in three ways. First is customer service is treated as an activity. Second is customer service as performance measure and customer service as a philosophy. So it's completely to the discretion of the company on how they want to see their customer service department. So certain companies will see their customer service department as only an activity. Certain companies will see as a performance measure and certain companies will see it as a philosophy. So now let's try to understand it better. So first is customer service as an activity. This level treats customer service as a particular task. A firm must accomplish to satisfy the customer needs. Typical, typical examples are order processing, billing and invoicing, product returns, claims handling. Customer service department could be set up to basically handle customer problems and complaints. So certain companies who see customer service as an activity, so maybe they will see order processing like as an activity of a customer service, billing and invoicing as an activity, product returns as an activity. So each department they will see as an activity. So more, more importance is uh, given to see this particular activity and to make it better. So that is the first point which is being dis uh, discussed here is when customer service is treated as an activity. Okay. Second is customer service as a performance measure. This level emphasizes customer service in terms of specific performance measures such as percentage of orders delivered on time and completed a number of orders processed within an accessible time limit. So when companies see Customer service is a performance measure, like how much is my order, how many orders I have received and how many I have delivered. 
whether the orders are delivered on time so everything when measured under the performance that is the second point which is discussed is customer service as a performance measure okay third point is customer service as philosophy this level elevates customer service to firm wide commitment to providing customer satisfaction through superior customer service rather than viewing customer service as an activity or a set performance measure this interpretation involves a dedication to customer service that pervades the entire firm of all its activity so most of the uh, companies who are successful in customer service department they have this activity because they are treating the customer service department as the most crucial department compared to any other department and they are treating the customer as god okay so this is the uh, this is the third point that we are discussing is customer service when treated as a philosophy okay now we will see what are the challenges of customer service mainly there are six challenges that we will discuss first is delivery consistency so what do you mean by delivery consistency we have already discussed about delivery consistency in the previous classes delivery consistency mean like maintaining a consistency in delivery throughout the operation because every customer when he makes an order he expect that his product is delivered on time he is expecting that uh, only only for the first few times i get the proper delivery it's not like that he is expecting that throughout throughout his uh, purchasing he expecting that the company delivers on a continuous and in a consistent mode okay second point is choosing the right technology technology plays a very important role so that is one of the important challenges while companies are trying to implement customer service certain companies who are still following traditional methods in customer service department so that uh, they are they are unable to track the customer orders on time and they are not able to deliver customer orders on time because they have not adopted to the latest trends and technologies in customer service now a lot of companies have launched a lot of new customers uh, customer service softwares with the help of which the companies can handle the customer uh, service department in a very efficient way okay so third point is creating a customer first culture this point we have already discussed like previously customer was treated as a king now in the scenario where there are a lot of players in the market customer is treated as a god like before any other department companies are giving first priority to the customer service department so that they can increase their efficiency efficiency so that is called as customer first culture okay understanding your customer expectation and delighting them as i al already told you like delighting the customer when a customer is is uh, is, is been delivered with Uh, with a product that exceeds his expectation then he is a delighted customer so it is one of the challenge of every company that they are not able to delight the customer so uh, one of the vision of every company must to delight the customer so that he becomes your lo your loyal customer and continue the relationship with your company okay next is systemizing customer feedback process it's a really very important point in customer service because uh, customers in customer service like uh, the customer expect that in case of an emergency in case of a complaint whom should i contact so what is the feedback mechanism a company has is the feedback me mechanism very user friendly because uh, customers always prefer to use product and services which have a very efficient feedback system so that customer can get in touch with the company and they can solve their problem as early as possible so that is a point which is, which was discussed here like systemizing customer feedback process okay finding skilled customer experienced professionals who can lead this is one of the important challenge in customer service in, in industry that is finding the right talent hiring the right talent or recruiting the right talent because customer service is a very sensitive department so you when when recruiting people for the customer service department it will be it will be good that you can recruit experienced people who are good in communication skill and who are, have expertise in customer service okay now let's uh, try some of the elements let's try to understand some of the elements for making a customer service department successful these are certain elements that a customer service professional should have uh, in order to make the customer service department successful first is patience of course the customer service representative should have a lot of patience because uh, sometimes he will he may have to interact with irritated customer so the customer service representative should be patient enough to hear all the problems of the customer and to solve the problem okay respect like uh, respect factor is really important uh, in a customer service department each and every customer should be treated with respect and understanding like always try to understand the problems of the customer before making a solution to the problem 
and positivity is a universal thing in any, any department not only customer service department if you have a very positive mind then you will be able to perform your duties and responsibilities in a much efficient manner and responding responding is really important like once you uh, once you get a inquiry from the customer uh, like the customer expect that the inquiry is uh, responded or replied in a very short time rather than delaying the process okay listening listening is also another important uh, element for making a customer service department successful a customer service uh, officer or executive should be a very good listener he should be able to listen to customer complaints and he should be able to uh, solve the problems as early as possible so now let's try to understand the barriers to excellent customer service like uh, whenever we are trying to implement an excellent customer service these are the certain barriers that we will come across so first one is failure to resolve resolve a complaint at first point of contact this is the first uh, barrier that most of the companies face like uh, failure to resolve the complaint at first point of contact because what customer expect is once uh, they register a complaint they expect that uh, their complaint is solved as early as possible so when this process is delayed the customer become an irritated customer so this is the first barrier to implementing a uh, excellent customer service second is realizing that the wow is out and ec is in so uh, this again explain about creating a delighted delighted customer so uh, when when received a complaint the customer service department tried to solve the complaint as early as possible uh, but if if the customer service executive is uh, able to solve the problem like within uh, much earlier than the stipulated time then the customer will be delighted rather than being happy he will be delighted okay so that is that is meant by creating a wow experience to the customer failure to listen to a customer this is another barrier while trying to implement customer service like uh, some customer service representative they will not try to listen properly to the customer so if you are not if you are not listening to the properly to the customer then you cannot identify the problem so if you cannot identify the problem definitely then you cannot suggest a solution to the customer so not defining what constitutes a complaint effectively so a complaint has to be properly defined by the customer service representative so if the problem is properly defined only then he can he will know like which department uh, has has to be contacted in case of emergency and restricting the channel that customers can use to make the contact this is another important barrier while trying to implement excellent customer service like the customer uh, will, will be more likely to be a confused customer he have bought the product but he doesn't know whom to contact in case of an emergency or in case of a damage to the product because the uh, channel is not clear the organizational structure or the hierarchy is not clear this is the first point that we discussed in the pre transaction elements of uh, customer service that is organizational structure so the customer had uh, have to be made clear regarding the organizational structure and hierarchy of the organization so that uh, uh, at a time of an emergency he must understand who should be contacted introducing the human touch were needed this point explains about the empathy factor or sympathy factor like whenever uh, there is an emotion when you feel in the customer service representative feels an emotional touch is needed he must adopt it because that can definitely increase the customer service there can you can you can make the customer as a loyal customer okay so responding to customer complaints via social media as i already discussed like social media plays a very important role in in the current market scenario so all the companies are uh, fighting hard uh, to maintain a, an efficient feedback mechanism system through social media so that customer complaints are addressed and they can solve the customer complaints as early as possible so that they can maintain the customer as a loyal customer and get good references from the customer and the last one is nothing but identify the cause and fix the problem the last one is identify the cause and fix the problem so hope you like my video so if you like my video please uh, hit the like button and please also subscribe to my channel thank you so much for your time